Hey guys, we're back in the woods today, this time with our mask on, and it just finished raining, so it's kind of wet everywhere. I don't really have a lot of space at home to make videos, so this is why I came out to the woods. So recently, it seems like a lot of people are building their own PCs, myself included, even though that there's a chip shortage right now. And while I was migrating my system over from my old laptop into this new PC, it got me thinking of all the stuff that I take for granted, all the packages and tools that I have installed that just makes my life a lot easier when I'm dealing with um, Gen 2 and packages and other stuff. So in this video, I just want to share with you guys some of the packages and tools that I have installed that I think it's useful for pretty much anyone that's trying to maintain their Gen 2 system. And oh yeah, if you guys are curious about my PC specs, I'll just put it up on the screen. I don't know, maybe you'll find it useful. So yeah, let's get into it. So the first package you should have installed is probably Xorg or X11. Uh, the package is called Xorg Server on Gen 2. And this is basically what's going to give you your graphical environment. Or Wayland, if you're planning to use Wayland. But a lot of packages still depend on X. So you should probably have it installed. This package will probably be already installed as a dependency if you're installing something like GNOME or KDE or some other desktop environment or if you're also installing a window manager but in addition to just installing it you also need to configure your make.conf file with some variables so if you take a look at my make.conf file I have the use flag X and the use flag Wayland turned on this is so packages uh, with X support or Wayland support will have those enabled when compiling. In addition to that, I also have a video cards variable. This is for telling Gen2 what graphics card you have. So for me, I have, unfortunately, a NVIDIA graphics card, and I'm using the open source Nouveau drivers right now because that's the one that works well with Wayland. But in my old system, I had Intel integrated graphics. So here I would put Iris, Intel, i965 or i915 depending on how recent your video card is and if you have an amd system then you'll probably use the radeon si or amd gpu for the variables and you guys can find out more about these variables on the gen 2 wiki or you guys can use the eQuery command which i'll talk about later and if you run like eQuery uses on the mesa package or on the xorg driver's package, it will tell you all the variables that it takes in for video cards. Okay, so the next package you should have installed is this program called EIX. And this program is basically a search tool for Gen2 packages on your system. And you might be thinking, well, doesn't Emerge have the dash dash search command? And yes, you're right, Emerge does ha have that built in, but it's pretty slow compared to EIX and it doesn't give you as much information about the package as you might want. So how EIX works is it caches all your packages into sort of like a database and this way whenever you're querying for packages it's a lot faster. And we can take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison between Emerge Search and EIX and you can see that EIX is like almost instant whereas Emerge dash dash search takes a little while before showing the results and even when it does show the results it doesn't show as much information say the use flags that you compiled it with when you compiled it and so on so EIX comes with a few commands there's the EIX update EIX diff and the EIX sync these are the main ones that I use so EIX update is just going to update the database so it's up to date with the packages on your system and then EIX diff will give you a diff of the previous database compared to the current database, which could be really useful if you want to see what packages were changed when you did an emerge dash dash sync. And the last one, EIX sync, basically combines everything together. It first runs an emerge dash dash sync, then it runs an EIX update, then it runs an EIX diff all in one command. And this is basically what I replace emerge dash dash sync with nowadays. I just run EIX sync instead and it does everything for me. Okay, so the third program that you should have installed is this 
package called Gen Toolkit. And I already mentioned this when we were talking about X11 with the eQuery command. But this program comes with a lot of commands and a lot of them are very useful. Uh, I'll just be talking about two of them today, mostly because these are the main ones that I use. And the first one is eQuery. This command basically queries information about Gen2 packages or eBuilds. Things like if you want to see what use flags a certain package have, you can do eQuery uses, then the package name, and I'll give you a list of all the use flags this package supports, which is what we used when we were checking out video cards. You can also do eQuery depends and the package name to get a list of all the packages that depend on this package. You can also do eQuery depth graph, which tells you what dependencies this package depends on. You can also do eQuery files to give you a list of all the files that a package installed. And you can also do eQuery belongs on a specific file name. And, and eQuery will tell you which package this file belongs to, which is really useful when you're debugging your system or when you're trying to clean out your system. You, maybe you want to know what file things belongs to. Maybe you want to reduce the amount of dependencies you have on your system. So that's basically the eQuery command. It's very useful. You don't have to go online to search for use flags anymore or go on the Gen2 packages. The next command, I don't use it as often, but it's still useful every now and then. And it's called the eClean command, or I mostly just use the eClean-dist command. And this basically cleans out all of your packages. So whenever you're compiling a package on Gen2, it needs to first download the package, right? Or the source code. But then once it's done installing it, it won't delete the source code or the, pack, the downloaded packages. And it's because you want to reduce the amount of bandwidth you use. Maybe you're going to be offline in a bit and you want to continue compiling or you want to reinstall a package, then you wouldn't have to go through the network again to grab those source code. But Gentoo doesn't delete any of these packages, like older versions of a package installed uninstalled packages. So all these files are going to end up taking a lot of space. So I usually just run eclean dist dash dash destructive, which basically deletes all the source code for packages that I don't have installed anymore. So yeah, this is pretty good if you're running low on space or something. So the fourth package you want to install is udisks or gvfs or udisks2, which is the one that I mostly use. These are basically packages that help you mount and unmount removable media. So stuff like USBs, external hard drives, and so on. Because by default, users can't mount drives. You have to mount them as root. And these packages basically let you mount them as users, which is what you want because you don't really want to have to sign into root and then mount your drive. Now, if you're using GNOME or something, you probably already have like GVFS installed as a dependency because I think stuff like Nautilus has a dependency on it. But if you're using a window manager like me, you probably won't have this stuff installed. And once you have your Gen 2 up and running, and then in a few weeks you want to put something onto a USB, you realize, oh, how do I do that? So this is, these packages are basically what this is for. Um, yeah, you just basically get it installed and then you could just use their command line tools. That, I don't remember what the command is for GVFS, but for UDISKs, you would use like UDISK UDISK CTL. Um, you will need to add a rule file for a pull kit if you're using UDISK2, just so it's, um, it's for permissions. I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can copy it down or something. And this basically tells the system that you're allowed to let users do these actions. Mounting USBs, mounting external hard drives, um, turning off hard drives, and so on. And you guys can play around with it. I just leave it like this. So yeah, that's, that's number four. Okay, so the last package is something that I actually recently installed. Um, it just never crossed my mind that I needed it. And it's fonts. Specifically, Emoji fonts. Seems like everywhere is using lots of emojis now. So you gotta have you gotta have an emoji font somewhere. This also applies if you read like non-English characters, like maybe Chinese or Korean or 
some other language that has special characters that's not part of the ASCII. And the font packages I would recommend you install would be first the Noto package. This is like Google's font package that basically supports every language under the sun, which is really nice. In addition to that, there's also the Noto emoji package. And this is basically just the Noto package, but for emojis. Like it gives, it's like an extra add-on to Noto. If you want to install some Asian fonts, I have stuff like RPIC fonts installed and Kochi Substitute and a few others that I'll put on the screen that I don't really remember off the top of my head. Uh, in addition, there's also Core Fonts, which is the Microsoft fonts. This is really handy when maybe your professor wants you to write your essay, specifically in Times New Roman for some reason, and you're like, okay, I don't have Times New Roman on Linux. Well, this font package gives you Times New Roman and a few other fonts from the Microsoft fonts, which could be really useful. If you notice that your emojis still aren't using um, the Noto emojis or something, you can use the eSelect tool to select the fonts that you need. So something like eSelect font config list, and it'll list out all the fonts that you have enabled and disabled, and you can enable them or disable them as you like. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Um, I hope you guys learned something new. Like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, I guess. Um, I'm going to head home now since it looks like it's going to rain again. But I'll see you guys in the next video.